Hello, this is Linda, a.k.a. Genealogy Nana. Uh, so a couple of days ago on Facebook, I posted my process for keeping track of what I have in Ancestry that I've already added to my desktop program. Now, my desktop program is Legacy. Uh, you can use this process with any desktop program or even any other web-based program that you use. Uh, because when you upload a GEDCOM, it does not bring over the sources. So this is a way to look at your sources quickly and easily and visually and see what you have in your desktop program or at another website. So the first thing I did is I went into Word and I created a Word art document and made it a JPEG. And this is what it looks like. It says this record has been added to Legacy Family Tree. So what I do first, um, starting with one individual, just pick one and start working with them, uh, go into the gallery, and you don't have to do this. You don't have to have a media um, image for this fact, but I like it, so it just, I like visual, so that's why I do it. So I find the document on my computer, and I drag it and drop it. There it is. I'm going to give it a title very simple, added to, to Legacy. And it's going to be linked to Jacob. And we hit Done. And when we go into the gallery, there it is. Now, going into the facts, you can add any kind of fact that you want. Every fact that you add should have a source. And looking at this, most all of mine do. Um, so we're going to add a new fact, and then we're going to add some sources to it. So my custom event is going to be added to legacy. Again, just so that I can see what I've added to my legacy program already when I'm not near my legacy program and can't pull the information up. Um, I always use the year of the birth of the person who, whose record I'm adding this event to so that it stays towards the top of my list. If you don't put a date in, it's going to go to the bottom and you'll be doing a lot more scrolling. If you put the date on there, it will always stay at the top. So we're going to add that and sure enough, pops right up, added to legacy. So when I open this fact, I can add media and I can add source citations. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add that media doc or that media image to this. All that's going to do is just going to create a little thumbnail here. Uh, visually, it just for me it works better that way. Again, like I said, you don't have to create this image. You can just do the the fact without an image. Um, that's your choice. Now, because I've been adding information into my legacy tree for several years. I've pulled off some information and created this tree in Ancestry to use as a demo in this video. So I know in my legacy tree that I have already added all of the census records for this man. So I'm going to go into my edit button. I'm going to go to my source citations. This lists all of the source citations that are listed here. And I can attach any of these source citations to this uh, custom event, custom fact, called Added to Legacy. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my census records, because I know my census records are in Legacy. And then I'm going to hit Close. So now when I click on the fact, it points to the records that have been added to Legacy. Just like if I click on the birth, it points to all of the records that displayed his birth of being 1829 and the place where he was born as being Prussia. There is one alternate birth location called Hamburg, and that is only seen on the 1880 census. So that is... Um, conflicting information that I'm going to have to resolve to figure out was he born in Hamburg 
or was he born in Prussia? Or are those two actually the same thing based off of the year? Because what I've determined is immigrants would list who was occupying their homeland at the time when they, when they answered where they were from. So you will see this, but it is still considered a conflicting information that you need to um, iron out and figure out to go to make sure that you're aligned with the GPS. But that's another video. Okay, so we've got these three sources attached. So now we're going to fast forward um, a couple of days, and I'm working on Jacob here, and I want to um, do another record. I can quickly look and see, well, I don't have to do these censuses because they're already in my legacy tree. So I can go and pick this Iowa census, do what I do um, to get it off of Ancestry, get it standardized so it can go into my legacy program, get everything done with legacy that I need to do, and get it added. Once I have added that into my legacy program, I would then come back over to my ancestry program and I will go to my source citations for that event and I will just click on the document that I just added to legacy. And now when I click on that, it shows four records because I just added the Iowa State Census record to my legacy program. Now, on most of these censuses, you're going to have other family members. And the way I handle my records is I handle them once. So I look at the 1850 census record, and I do everything to everybody on that census at that time. I don't just do one person and then go back and touch it 10 more times for the other nine people or 10 more times for the other 10 people that are on the census record in that family. It's a one-shot deal. Touch it once, put it away. So I know on all of these censuses that he was either with his parents, which would be on the 1850 census because he married Margaret in 1852, or he would be with his wife, depending on the year of the Iowa census, he would be with his wife on these other two federal censuses. So I could then take this fact and add it to these people as well. So one easy way to do that is if you go into the gallery, you can open the media file and use this add button. And if you use this add button, you can click on the other people that you want to add to this image. So we're going to add his father and his wife, and we're going to add his mother. So now this image has now been attached to Jacob the son, Jacob the father, Margaret the mother, and Margaret the wife. And let's go double check and make sure that that worked out correctly. And there he is with Jacob. So if we go back to the facts and we click on his wife and go into the gallery, there is the record or the, the media file. If we go back to the facts and then we go check on Jacob's father and go to the gallery, there it is on Jacob the father. If we go and look at the mother and go to the gallery, there it is on the mother. So I can now go into my facts screen and I can click add custom event added to legacy using her date of birth 1784 go into the media and attach that media and then I can go into the source citations. Now, because I just pulled select pieces of information, as you can see, his mother doesn't have the 1850 census. So that tells me that because I've, I've just pulled over certain records, that would tell me in, in my regular file that I need to go find that census record and make sure um, 
that she's listed on it or verify that her date of death wasn't before that census. But for now, she's not there. We're not going to add anything because we're just working with these records that I have. Um, and she actually died here, it looks like 1866, so she should be on that 1850 census. Um, so we'll go to his father. Oh, that was her father. I apologize. Let's go back to Jacob the son. And we'll go to Jacob's father. Now we know John, uh, Jacob was list, living with his parents in 1850. So on his father, we can add that event added to legacy. We'll use his date of birth, 1787, and add that. And I always hit enter before I go in and, and do the media. And I should learn to check all of those boxes. So we've added the media. Now we're going to go to the source citations. So we know that the 1850 census, he is listed. And we know he's in my legacy program because I already know I put him in there. And when I do a census, I do everybody that's on that census in that family. So we'll close that. And then we know his wife was also there. But didn't we just do his wife? Yes, because she did not have the census. So we're going to skip the wife for now. So we're just going to go back to the father and then go back to the son. Now, we know in the 1870 and 1880 census, this man was living with his wife. So let's check out her records. And for now, on her records, we only have the 1870 census. So let's add that fact added to legacy her date of birth 1832 and I'm going to click on media first I learned I'm going to add that media to that fact for her go into the source citation I know she's already been added into legacy with the 1870 census so I can add that there now let's say it's you know I don't remember what's in legacy and, and what's not and I can come here to Margaret in my ancestry file now and I can click on this and I can see that I only have her added with the 1870 census let's take a look at these hints but I'm at work and I'm just piddling around with ancestry adding those hints well I know this is her and I know that's her husband and I know that's one of her children so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit review and say yes I'm gonna add that um, and that spelling is just so awful. I'm not even going to add that spelling to that. I need to go in and check and see what's going on with that. Now, the last name for Jacob has been seen several different ways. So I always add, if the name is spelled differently, I'll always add it as an alternate spelling. And then for the children, because this is how she was listed, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to save that to the tree, and then when we come over here and look at her facts now, she now has this Iowa marriage record for her daughter, Ida. But let's say I wanted to now add some of these records to Ancestry. So I'm going to work on my Ohio County marriage record. Um, download it from Ancestry, manipulate it, do everything I need to do, get it into my legacy tree. It's in my legacy tree. I now need to add this to the record added to legacy so I know that I don't have to download that file again. So I click on Edit, go to Source Citations, and we're going to throw in that Ohio County marriage. Put that on there. Now, you got to have two people to get married. We know Margaret married Jacob. I've seen this record. I know that Jacob's name is on it. There are no parents listed, so it's only listing Margaret and Jacob. So now I can come over to Jacob, and I can go to Added to Legacy, and the source citations, and let's come down here. There's the Ohio marriage record, and put that there. And now I can quickly look and see what records still need to be added to legacy at a very quick glance.
Now, one of the other, um, one of the comments I got on one of my Facebook posts was, why don't you use the tree tags? And I'm going to explain why I don't use the tree tags for this. The tree tags attach to the person. So if Jacob was in the military, yeah, I could put down that he was a veteran because that's him. That's part of him. I could put down that he was an immigrant. I could put down that, you know, he was, he worked on the railroad. Whatever tree tag that I wanted to use, I could put that to Jacob here. The issue lies in that if I put up here added to legacy, that tells me that Jacob was added to legacy. It does not tell me what sources that I have found for him have been added to legacy. But doing it this way, adding that fact, will point out to me which facts have been added to legacy. And let's take Margaret for example. So here's Margaret, his wife, and she has three records right now. <clears throat> Two of those have been added to legacy. If I were to go in here and add a fact, let's just go ahead and do that. Create a custom fact added to legacy. And I create that. Now, it says added to legacy. She has five more hints. Let's take a look at those hints. Because with the added to legacy right now, the only thing truly added to legacy are these two facts. This one's not been added yet, and these five absolutely have not been added yet. So we know this is her. That's one of her children. And I use this family a lot because this is my dad's line, and I've worked on it for 30 years, so I kind of know everything pretty much frontwards and backwards on these records. So we're going to do that. Now, this spelling is a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and add that as an alternate name. Um, his name, again, different there. We're going to add that as an alternate name. And then we don't know the first name of this child, but we do have their date of birth. And it says a female, so we'll, fingers crossed. Let's double check. Not a new person. Let's see if Ida. Nope, Ida was born in 74, so we know this isn't Ida. So we'll save that to the tree. And I'm going through here. Of course, I never add anything from the ancestry member trees. I always ignore those. Um, here's one. This is my great-grandfather. So we will add that to her tree. And again, there's another spelling difference. We're going to add the spouse. And we're going to add the son. And put that in there. And we'll go ahead and stop there because I know these two are definitely, this one I don't believe is her because I don't think she was ever in New York. Um, and this is the AGBI, which is pretty much information from old trees or indexes and whatnot. Now, the date of birth matches, um, but I don't always add the AGBI. I usually either ignore it or leave it in um, undecided. But for now, we'll do this. And so when we go back and look at the facts now, this tells me that she's been added to legacy. But have all of these records been added to legacy? Doing it this way, you just don't know. Doing it this way, I know what's been added to legacy, and I know what's not been added to legacy. So that's why you really can't use these tree tags on a person to determine what you've added to legacy and what you haven't, except that you can use it to add the person, their name, but not necessarily what sources that they've added, because these hints will always come up, and the more hints that you add, then it makes that fact up here, this tree tag, it makes it obsolete, because not everything that's, been in, that's in the sources have been added to your tree. Let's go back over here to the gallery. Now, this will also work the nice thing if you have the newspaper articles and you download them as a PDF or you even download them as an image or you upload photos. You can then attach, when you put those photos in Legacy or those PDFs and whatnot in Legacy, 
you can also add those here by going to the media section and it will list all of the media that they have now right now it says no other media is available but if you look in her gallery these items are listed as sources so they're not going to be considered media and you notice there is no delete button only the items in here that are that have a delete button are considered media so if I uploaded a newspaper article for her for example then I added that newspaper article to legacy I could go into my facts click on here go into the media find that media image down here and click it up to add it to legacy so this is again just a quick way to test or to check what you have in ancestry at a glance and see what you've added to your desktop program for your family tree or to another website so you can use this on um, wiki trees on um, I think tribal pages has a, a place where you can upload your tree you can use it for what you've put in family search you can use it for roots magic legacy uh, TNG Heritus any of the programs that are out there you can use this for so hopefully this helps clear up some things by all means leave comments and suggestions in the comment section down below of my YouTube channel and until next time Happy ancestry hunting. Bye, everybody.